Okay, I'm a dentistry student and would like you to give me a brief account in less than one minute about the anatomy of the lateral pterygoid muscle. Absolutely. The lateral pterygoid muscle is a key muscle in dentistry, particularly for its role in jaw movements. It has two heads. The superior head originates from the infratemporal surface and crest of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone, while the inferior head originates from the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate. Both heads insert into the neck of the mandible and the articular disc and capsule of the temporomandibular joint, TMJ. Functionally, the lateral pterygoid muscle is responsible for opening the jaw by protruding the mandible, and it assists in lateral movements of the jaw, side-to-side -side motions, which are crucial for effective chewing and grinding of food. This muscle is unique among the muscles of mastication because it is primarily involved in opening the jaw, whereas others mainly function to close it. Okay, so now as a self-assessment, can you ask me three questions about the, uh, that muscle, but one question at a time, please. Sure. Here's your first question. What are the two origins of the lateral pterygoid muscle? So the muscle arises from the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate, and as well as from the infratemporal surface of the uh, greater wing of the sphenoid. That's correct. Great job. Here's the second question. Where does the lateral pterygoid muscle insert? Well, it inserts into the neck of the mandible, but uh, there are some fibers that are attached to the capsule of the temporomandibular joint and the intraarticular disc as well. Exactly right. You're doing well. Here's the final question. What are the primary functions of the lateral pterygoid muscle? Well, the most important function of the lateral pterygoid muscle is that it um, uh, moves the mandible downwards, that's to say it opens the mouth, as well as it moves it forwards, so it protrudes the mandible, and as well as uh, like uh, lateral excursion. Perfect, you've got it. The lateral pterygoid muscle indeed helps open the mouth, protrude the mandible, and enable lateral movements. Great job. Okay, so now can you give me a multiple choice question with the, uh, four options uh, about this muscle? Here's a multiple choice question for you. Which of the following is not a function of the lateral pterygoid muscle? A, opening the mouth, C, elevating the mandible, D, allowing side-to-side -side movements of the jaw. Can you repeat the options, please? Here are the options again. A, opening the mouth, C, elevating the mandible, D, allowing side-to-side -side movements of the jaw. What about B? I didn't hear option B. Option B is opening the mouth. What about option C? Option C is elevating the mandible. Yeah, so uh, C is correct. The uh, lateral pterygoid does not elevate the mandible. It depresses the mandible. Isn't that right? Yes, that's correct. The oh. lateral pterygoid does not elevate the mandible. It depresses, opens the mandible protrudes it, and assists in lateral movements. Well done. Okay, so um, the lateral pterygoid is attached to the neck of the mandible. W what, which muscle is attached to the coronoid process of the mandible? The muscle attached to the coronoid process of the mandible is the temporalis muscle. I see. And why, why do they call the muscle temporalis? The temporalis muscle is named for its location. It covers the temporal bone, which is part of the skull, located on the side of the head near the temples. 
Oh, okay, I see. And wh why the bone is called the temporal bone? The temporal bone is named because it is located near the temples of the head. The word the temporal comes from the Latin word temporalis, which means of the temples. The name the name reflects its position on the side of the skull, near the area where time, or the passage of time indicated by aging, is often first noticed, like graying hair. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. So that is the origin of the, of the term uh, temporal. Okay. Yes, exactly. It's interesting how anatomical terms often have such logical origins. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. So, so the last question, is it possible to give me a multiple choice question on the muscles of mastication using a clinical vignette and four options? Of course, here's a clinical vignette with a multiple choice question. A 45 year old man presents with difficulty chewing and pain around his jaw. Upon examination, you notice that he has limited ability to open his mouth and experiences discomfort when trying to move his jaw from side to side. Based on these symptoms, which muscle is most likely affected? Okay, I guess it's the uh, spasm of the lateral pterygoid muscle. That's correct. The symptoms described such as difficulty opening the mouth and discomfort with side-to-side -side movements are indicative of an issue with the lateral pterygoid muscle. Great job. Thank you. And um, uh, can, can you uh, uh, give me a brief account on how the lateral pterygoid muscle contributes to dislocation of the TMJ? Sure. The lateral pterygoid muscle plays a role in dislocation of the temporomandibular joint, TMJ, by exerting a forward pull on the mandible. When the mouth is opened widely or with excessive force, the lateral pterygoid muscle can pull the mandibular condyle out of the mandibular fossa, causing it to move anteriorly. If this forward movement is too great, the condyle can slip past the articular eminence of the temporal bone, leading to a dislocation. This can result in pain, difficulty closing the mouth, and misalignment of the jaw. Okay, I see. And, and what are the scenarios that can contribute to the dislocation of the mandible? Scenarios that can contribute to the dislocation of the mandible include one, trauma to the jaw, such as a direct blow or impact. Two, yawning or opening the mouth excessively wide. Three, dental procedures where the mouth is kept open for a long time. Four, seizures, which can cause sudden forceful movements. Five, certain conditions like hypermobility disorders where the joints are more prone to dislocation. These scenarios can all cause the mandible to move out of its normal position, leading to dislocation. I see, so we have to be careful when yawning, isn't that right? Yes, that's right. <laughs> While it's rare, it's still a good idea to be mindful not to open your mouth too wide during yawning or other activities to avoid stressing the temporomandibular joint. Okay, okay. Okay, so thank you. I have no more questions. Thank you very much. You're welcome. If you ever have more questions, feel free to ask. Have a great day.